And I know, I know we have a very long way to go, and I know we're all worried about property, and I know, you know, how heartrending it is, and all the injustice that we still have to deal with. So I, I just want to say, in the spirit of us all being together here today, I just want to remind you, I think we all know instinctively that this is all one struggle. But uh, it, it's phrased to us as different struggles. You know, so people will say, well, why are you here? Because this is a different subject, as if it were a different subject, you know, and, and, and it, it's not. So l let me say if I can, think if I can say briefly why it's all the same. This, if you poured water on what I'm about to say, it probably become three volumes. <laughs> But how we all got in trouble here was the changeover in history from the previous kind of cultures, the original cultures on every continent that were about balance with nature, that were about balance between men and women, that didn't, the, the languages didn't have gender. I mean, still my Cherokee, my friends who grew up speaking Cherokee and other native languages get mixed up with he and she because there's you know, part of their, their language. Women controlled their own fertility. They had several, they had children. Uh, if they desired to have children, uh, they waited until the first, the one before was about six. They had, you know, they, <laughs> they controlled agriculture. The chief might be a male, although some of the chiefs were female, but the female elders chose the chief. I mean, you know, they were very different, very, very different cultures. And what got us all so fucked up here <laughs> is that what's called patriarchy that is, came, came along for a whole series of, of reasons. The, I mean, Europe became like pioneers of patriarchy. Uh, and because uh, of the need to, or the felt need to control women's bodies in order to decide how many workers, how many soldiers, who owned them and proper uh, systems of marriage and so on. And gradually out of that came the idea that all sex was only moral and okay if it was directed toward conception, if it could end in conception, and took place inside a patriarchal marriage so people were owned right, properly. Now, you know, so that meant that all sexual expression that didn't end in conception was condemned and condemned people were burned at this time. I mean, you know, it got worse and worse and worse and worse. And this is why every movement of equality for female human beings and for human beings who happen to love people of the same sex and for people who are uh, rebelling against racism, because in order to maintain a racist structure, you have to control reproduction. Otherwise, you don't maintain the differences, right? So in a big sweeping sense, we are all in the same boat for the same reasons. And when people sometimes ask me in bewilderment, why is the right wing against both lesbianism uh, and birth control? <laughs> us to object whether it is regarded as our issue or not, it is. And, and it is up to each of us. So, you know, in a way that's the bad news, you know, because all the, the caste systems of sex and race are intertwined and you can only help them together and all the bias against sexuality as a form of expression, not only procreation, it all, it all comes in, in one, you know, unfortunate, you know, well, I mean, actually, maybe we should just declare this the first meeting of the post-racist, post-heterosexist, post-nationalist, post-monotheistic, I have to say that God looks like the ruling class, but probably all of them are <laughs> of human history, what we're describing now. 95% of human history was, was different, not to romanticize it, but it was profoundly different, and we can still see those values in the original and, and aboriginal cultures on all of our, all of our continents. Um, 
So that was an experiment that failed these last few tests. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the first meeting of going forward. <laughs> I'm proud to be here on, on International Women's Day. I do think it's one of the few things that the United States has given to the rest of the world that was sort of good, right? <laughs> uh, and, uh, and you know, even Mother's, Mother's Day started as an anti-war holiday. I hope you know that an anti-war statement, a profound, radical anti-war statement. Don't let Walmart tell you. <laughs> And it, it isn't that uh, women are more moral or better folks or anything like that than men. It's just that we were raised without our masculinity to prove. And therefore, we have been a disproportionate number always in the peace movements around the world. I just it was at a meeting in Moscow, where I have been in Russia before, of women journalists from many, many different countries, all of whom have been covering conflict zones around the world. They were Iranian, they were from Israel and Palestine, they were from uh, Italy, and you know, a wide variety of, of countries. And their point was that if the, an emphasis on conflict resolution and peacefulness was going to come to the world, it would certainly include men, as long as there's a peaceful man and a warlike woman in the world, we know that it's not about biology, right? It's not. But that culturally speaking, it was more likely to come from women. And one of the things we, we talked about was um, saying to journalism schools and to major news outlets of all sorts, why is it that we don't have peace correspondents as well as war correspondents? Mm. The whole area. Peacemaking and, and the, uh, the elaborateness that is necessary to have conflict res resolution, to have everyone's voices heard, to be able to listen to each other, all those kinds of governance structures which actually were perfected on this continent by the 500 native nations that were here before Europeans showed up. I mean, that was the whole point of their, uh, of their structures. It is a whole specialty. Uh, and it's, it's, it's glorious and, and complicated. And as long as we put our attention towards, only towards hostility and militarism, uh, even if it's stopping it, we won't have the emphasis we need on the alternative to it. We won't understand how complex it is and how much it is a process, how much it is a means that are, are going to be to the end. Yeah. So I, I hope that on this day uh, we can celebrate each other. We can understand that it was different for uh, the first, you know, 95% of the history can be different again. We can deeply understand that the violence that we experience imminently normalizes the violence everywhere else. Maybe we should call, instead of saying domestic violence, which is breaking forward, which is being made visible and made it to have lost that. Maybe we should call it now original violence. Because when there is violence between males and females, based on the cult of masculinity, which men do believe that they are born into, uh, it, it normalizes violence in the street and in foreign policy. If we take that seriously, if we take seriously what is happen happening in the Honduras, what is happening uh, in 